up and bat around Being sent up and I've been shot down You're the best thing I've ever found Reputations changeable, situations tolerable. Baby, you're adorable. Handle me with care. I'm so tired of being lonely. I still have some love to give. Won't you show me that you really? Everybody's got somebody to lean on Put your body next to mine and dream on Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking Handle with Care by the Travelling Wilburys, of course. One of the incredible, so probably one of the superest super bands of all time. Incredible bunch of musicians playing some amazing music. And really interesting how you can hear the influence of the different guys, I think, in each of the tunes. This one sounds a little bit Roy Orbison for me, except for the chorus, which sounds a bit Tom Petty. So, But it's a lovely tune to play. Um, sorry, the throat's a little bit croaky trying to sing that low and that high at this, in the same tune. Especially, I just finished doing the other uh, um, Mary Jane's Last Dance is also a little bit uh, difficult on the old voice but anyway I'm sure you'll forgive me or bash me in the comments if you so desire anyway this one's a really really nice tune if you want to play a simple version of it but to get in all of the little kind of lead guitar runs that I'm popping in there as well there at the beginning it's a little bit more tricky but I'll show you both versions with note and on the original it's uh, one guy playing the chord well there's a, a few different guitar layers but one's playing strictly chords and the other is playing a kind of a lead line I just think uh, sounds cool to be able to combine them together if you're playing by yourself so that's kind of what I'm going to hope to show you through this lesson so Let's have a look at the first chord progression first of all. It seems like a logical place to start here. Um, we've got this little D. D with the C bass. G with the B bass. G. That's the sequence. Now, the D, I'm not playing the thinnest string here. Okay, You could play D sus2 and leave the, the thinnest string open if you wanted to, but you don't want your second finger over there on the regular D because it makes it kind of an awkward jump getting to the C bass, which is the second chord. So we want D, D with a C bass. Okay, so literally, if you're just using your first and third fingers on the D, muting the thinner string, not playing the thickest two strings either, so just from the fourth string, third string, and second string. Now, I should note as well, I just accidentally strummed the A string there. A string sounds fine. If you accidentally strum the A string on a D chord, it doesn't sound bad at all. You don't want to strum the thicker string, the E string. That'll sound horrible. But if, you, if you're aiming for strings 4, 3, and 2, and you accidentally hit string 5, the fifth string, it's, it's, you know, it's not going to sound bad at all. In fact, I'm sure I do it. I'm sure it's there on the original recording as well quite a bit. It's just a note of the chord. So D with a C bass. So now second finger is going down third fret of the fifth string. D. Okay. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, then we've got to G with a B bass. So now first finger's moving from its spot on the D chord to the second fret of the fifth string. So now we're just playing the middle strings. The thicker string is still going to be muted, probably by the tip of the first finger if you can. So nothing, second fret, open, open, third fret, thinner string will stay muted. That's the, the G slash B, a G chord with a B bass note. There's your B bass note. And then we've got the G chord. And the G is called what we call push. So it's a little, an eighth note earlier uh, than you might anticipate. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. It's changing on the up. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now there's this little walk up, I'm going to take you through that, sorry, I didn't mean to do it this early in the lesson, I'll show, I will show you how to do that at the same time. But I recommend that you start with just the D, C, G with 
with a B bass to G. D, C, G with a bass to G. Now it does that around uh, that little sequence twice through for the intro, then another two times for the first verse. Then it goes to a C chord for a bar, G to E minor, when the E minor is pushed. One and two and three and four and. Okay, so it's just changing on the and after two instead of beat three. Um, I'm going to do this again in a second, so don't worry. And then we've got C, D, G. Okay, one and two and three and four and. Got that another push there. C for one and two and D for and. We've got that G in a very specific strain pattern, which I'm going to talk about just in a sec. Let me just go through that verse sequence now. So hopefully you're clear with the intro. Uh, that was just that little two-bar sequence. But the verse, one and two. D with a C bass to the B bass to G and a C. You're the best thing. One and two and that was G to E minor. C to D G. Okay, now talk a little bit about the strumming and that'll kind of run into that uh, rhythm on that G chord at the end. So I'm just playing even eighth notes. One and two and. a bit of an accent on beats two and four. Three, that's a C chord. G to A minor. C, D, G, and two, three. Okay, so just on the G chord, it's very obvious it changes on the and after four from the D chord. So C, D, and four, and one, and two, three, four. Okay, it's strumming up on uh, up on the and after four, which is where it changes to the G. Four and one and two, three, four up, up down down, four up, up down down. Okay, very very specific. Just on that the ending there, most of the band seem to pick up the same sort of groove. So again, from the C D to G, which is the last two bars of the verse. One and two and three and four and one and two, three, four. Okay? One and two and three and four and one and two, three, four. Okay? One more time all of the way through the verse. Three, four. D with a C bass, B bass, G. D with a C bass, G with a B bass to G. To C. G to E minor. C. D, G. Verse 2, almost the same, starts the same. Still the same, C, G to E minor, but now it goes C for a whole bar to D for a whole bar. Okay, so verse 2 is the same as verse 1. Again, if you're listening to the original recording, you're just going to have to, because it's, it's quite a long song with a lot of sections in it. Um, so just have a listen to the verse progressions to know if it's the same as verse 1 or verse 2, because they're just slightly different there at the end. Um, and now we come to the bridge part. Bridge is really nice. To me, it sounds very, very Roy Orbison, this, the, particularly this second chord. Such a lovely chord. It's a G augmented uh, chord. So... You want to start with a G chord using just fingers three and four. So third finger on the uh, uh, third fret of the thicker string. It'll also mute the fifth string. Open, open, open. Th uh, little finger on the third fret of the thinner string. Now to get to a G augmented, you need to put your first finger in the first fret of the fourth string. So you end up with third fret, nothing. First fret, open, open, third. Mysterious that chord, isn't it? Right? Very cool kind of chord. It sounds a bit weird on its own, but in context, it's really, really nice. Particularly on that string, we get the that going to this, which is in the C chord. So you get that nice what we call a harmonic movement. But G, G augmented, C to D chord. G, G augmented, C to D. G to G augmented, C to D to G for two bars, four. 
into the chorus. Every C chord needs another bar of C to G on for two bars, back to C chord for two bars, and then it's D chord for two bars. Then you stay on D and then you're going around that same verse. Okay, so the chorus, very, very simple. Two bars of C, two bars of G, two bars of C, two bars of D. Not going to get any simpler than that, right? So the chorus, it's really the easiest part. Again, with these kind of tunes, you, the, the, the biggest part, the thing that I think most people struggle with is getting the rhythm and the groove right. So it's not just playing the chords right and playing the rhythm right, it's making it feel right. And I know I talk about this all the time. I think it's a, a you know a, a fairly new thing in my teaching. You won't find it in the older lessons, but I think it's a, a really really uh, good idea that I've I've had a lot of positive response from students. Is just this idea of muting the chords, you know, and then practicing doing the strumming without having any of that you know the the, the worry about the chords and just practicing getting in the groove and going like that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. You know, that can really help, you know, really just trying to accent as well the beats two and four, which is called the back beat, which helps the, the groove along. I get it's one of those things that might not be on the original recording, actually such a heavy uh, hit on the back beat. Um, but when you plan songs by yourself, even if it's not on the original recording, if you don't have a drummer and, and other people in the band to put that accent on, it's, it generally sounds better, I think, if you can add that in yourself. So um, let me just play it through now. The intro, verse one, verse two. Uh, bridge and then the chorus and just play it once through all of the way so you can see how it's uh, how it all fits together so three four into the verse C bass B bass G D the C bass G with a B to G C G to E minor C D, G, D, with a C bass, B bass, G, D, with a C bass, B bass, G, C, G to E minor, C for a whole bar, to D for a whole bar, now to G, augmented, C to D, G, G augmented, C to D. G augmented C to D chord back to G. Two bars and then to C chord, needs a C chord to G on. Back to C chord for two bars and then to D for two bars. Then we're back to the first and sound. Okay, let's talk now a little bit about um, this lead line thing because uh, for me it makes it r sound really good in the verses. I, I like the feeling of it, but it's not that easy. So um, you want to make sure that you're together with what I've just shown you well and truly before you even attempt having a go at this because what we're having to do is continue strumming while picking out notes individually. So um, if I'm thinking about that part, I'm, I'm accenting the notes a little bit more. So D, C, B, G. Now when I do this G, A, B, C, D, I'm trying to keep the strumming motion all the time. Um, it's literally from the G chord, I'm using the open A, first finger, second fret of the fifth string, third finger, third fret of the fifth string to get to the D. It's just kind of like a little bit of scale connection really, but with a C bass, B to G. And I've got an up pick on the A, down on the B, up pick on the C, and then we're back at the D. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Up, down, up, down. Okay, it's not that difficult. But you're still remembering to try and keep strumming, that strumming feeling. Okay, while you're picking out those notes, I don't think it works to kind of strum all of the strings. So you are picking out notes individually, but you don't want to mute off all of the chords either. So that would be first step, it's just practicing that little section. So 
So that works great until you get to the C chord. And, and when you're going to the C chord, because the original run was kind of passing through C, it makes it a little bit uh, awkward. You have to change the fingering, basically. So uh, when it comes to that in the, in the verse, you know, you do that sequence twice around that I've just shown you. And then we've got to go to the C chord. When it's going to the C chord, um, all normal here. Okay, I've had to change the fingering. So I'm playing my G chord like this with the second finger on the third fret of the thickest string and uh, second finger on the third fret of the second string. That's my G chord. But when I'm doing my... I've got this open. I'm using my second finger and third finger. Now the third finger is already in position for the C chord now. So... Okay, from the G like this. Open A string, that's the point where we can get our whole hand off. Second finger, second fret, third finger down in the third fret. Then as we strum down, we've got our C chord. So first sequence. Fine, now we've got to go into a C here. Change fingering. C, and that's it. That's the only part that you have to watch out for, and that's the... It's kind of funny because I had to actually sit down and go, oh, hang on, I'm, I'm doing it wrong. And what I just did, I, I did a kind of little mistake uh, when I started filming this, is, is I did what happens if you don't change the fingering, which would be this. You end up with, oh, I'm on the C and my fingers are in completely the wrong place. And then you've got to do a big chord change. So, and, and it kind of interrupts the flow of the chords and the flow of the song. So if you're going to do that run up, when it's going to stay on the C chord, okay, when it's doing the here, and you know the next chord is the C chord where it's staying on the C chord, change that fingering to open, second finger, third finger, then your C chord's ready to go. If you don't, it just kind of leads a little, it's, it's going to be feel a little jumpy, okay? Um, I, I thought tried to think of a few ways ar around doing it, because like I said, it's originally a, sec a, a separate guitar part. Um, and you can... You can change the line to get an open A in there before the chord, but it's just much better, I think, to, to change the fingering. It seems to make a lot more sense uh, to me. If you get a chance to play this with another guitar player, it's definitely worth separating out those parts as well. It's a really nice thing to have one guitar just playing a kind of arpeggios. I think the original is like... something like that, where it's just notes of the chord, quite clean, sparkly, probably a Telecaster, a little bit, you know, a lot of reverb that kind of effect uh, with an acoustic guitar strumming is really, really nice. So have a bit of an experiment again with that if you've got the opportunity to jam it with somebody else. The, the, the acoustic guitar with a clean electric guitar combo is really, real. It's, a, it's a classic for a reason. It sounds really good. It's great fun to uh, explore if you've got somebody to jam with. So uh, look, I really hope you enjoyed learning this tune and I'll see you over on the website for more than a thousand free lessons. You've got to go and check it out if you haven't already. And I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.